one shot that I've used again and again and again is actually called the worm's eye shot. It's when you place your camera on the ground facing directly upwards. I've used this specific shot and variations of it in many different campaigns, and I just wanted to make a quick video about why I like it so much and why I think it works so well, especially in social media and short form content. Now, what is known as the worm's eye shot is basically just a low angle perspective shot. Specifically, when I use it, I typically have the camera on the ground or as low as possible facing directly upwards towards the sky. A lot of times when I utilize this shot, I'll often incorporate a certain interactive element. Sometimes I'll have the camera placed inside a bag and I'll have the subject unzip the bag and grab the camera either by the body or the lens. I've utilized this here specifically in this Gucci Palace campaign where I've said I unzip the bag and pull the camera out. Another example is in a recent Lululemon shoot, we had about six individuals kind of crowded around the camera. And at the end, in order to loop the video, I had one of the subjects drop their hat directly onto the lens and have it covered so that when the final scene cut to black, the logo appeared and it was kind of like a good ending to the video. Both these instances are variations of somebody kind of interacting with the actual camera or the lens in some sort of like fun, playful way. The shot provides a really interesting perspective directly from the ground facing upwards. It's almost exactly opposite of what people call the bird's eye shot or the bird's eye view. And it's something I don't see utilized enough and it's just such an easy shot to get. Now, some things to consider when I have this shot positioned, I'm almost always using a super wide lens. One of my favorite lenses is this 14G Master for the Sony specifically. It's a 14 mil lens and it goes to, I think 1.1.8. So it has a great depth of field while also still retaining like a super wide focal length. Oftentimes I'm switching between the 14 millimeter or the 10 to 18, just to get that super wide field of view, especially when you're placing your camera on the ground and you're having subjects either like stand over or sort of crouch over the camera. If you're working with like a 24 to 70 or I mean, maybe 24 might work, but anything larger than like 35 millimeters in terms of focal length, I don't think you're really gonna get that sort of like really surreal wide field of view that you need in order to really punctuate and accentuate the subject in typically the middle of your screen. Obviously when you're shooting this type of wide angle shot, your eyes go directly to the middle of the screen. Typically I'll have the subject kind of placed or crouched directly over. And when you're using a wide field of view or wide lens, you want to make sure that you get their head or their facial features right in the middle of the screen. Or else if you're working with like a 14 mil, if you get them like slightly to the side, their features start to distort. So that's one thing you need to keep in mind when you're taking this shot. Another thing I like to consider is oftentimes I'll do interactive elements, as I stated before, with this specific shot. So either starting with the camera covered or ending with the camera covered, just so you have some sort of variation in terms of the edit. If you have something in mind, then it's always better to do that and have this sort of pre-planned. Besides the technical aspect of this shot, one thing that you need to keep in mind is that this isn't a necessarily super common shot and it's not something that everybody has experience with. So when you're directing the people that are gonna be in this video, you need to be pretty detailed in your direction. So that means you need to either bring references to show real quickly what you're envisioning for this shot, or if it's a run and gun situation, kind of just really quickly show somebody a freeze frame of what this angle looks like, just so that when you're placing people or you're trying to have them like act, they know like what you're doing with the camera on the ground pointing upwards. On the FX3, there's actually a flip screen so that when you place the camera on the ground, you can flip the camera out and actually have the screen visible so that you can show everybody the shot that you're sort of envisioning and they can see how the framing is really unique and with a super wide lens that everybody, even if they're super close to the camera, they can still be seen and it creates that really cool sort of like perspective shot that you're going for. Besides that though, once people kind of get the gist of what you're going for, it's a really fun shot and a lot of times the people who are in the video, the actors, they're always on board and willing to try whatever it is that you're really envisioning or perhaps the interactive element really comes comes through and it's a lot of fun. So a lot of times it comes out really genuine and really it's a good shot to just take in case you want to add to the video. You don't always have to, but I always try to get one on each set. So yeah, I just want to make a quick video on one of my favorite shots that I always try to take on every set. It helps to have a smaller camera. So the FX3 or FX30 are great camera bodies to do this on. I mean, you could do this with basically any small mirrorless or DSLR camera. I think cinema cameras is a little bit more difficult just because they're larger bodies. But even on your iPhone on the 0.5 lens, this is also a fun shot to get. If you have any questions on this shot in particular or any other kind of like general questions, just leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you and appreciate you guys sticking to the very end. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next one.